Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the electrical properties of solids, which means we are going to talk about what are conductors, insulators, semiconductors, also about the band theory of conduction and also about the n-type and p-type semiconductors, okay? Looks like we have a long day ahead, so let's begin. All right, so before starting, we should know what actually is conduction, okay? So conduction is an inherent property of a solid. What is inherent? Inherent means that it is inherent to it whether or not it is going to allow the passage of electrons through it, okay? For example, uh, everybody knows that copper is a conductor. I think everybody knows copper actually forms all the wires and we have all the wiring system in our houses made up of copper most of the times, okay? So copper is a conductor, we all know that. Whereas if we talk about wood, okay? Everybody knows that wood is not a conductor, right? Because no matter from what place of the earth we import the wood, wood is never going to be able to conduct electricity. It is going to burn off, but it is not going to conduct, okay? So that is why wood does not fall into category of conductors. It is inherent to the wood that it is not going to pass, uh, not going to allow the passage of electrons, right? So on your screens, you can see there are certain materials which are added into the circuit and where if the bulb glows, they are conductors and if the bulb does not glow, they are insulators, right? So on the basis of this parameter of whether or not they can conduct, the materials are actually classified into three, okay? The first one is conductors, which means they conduct electricity nicely, okay, without any, any issues and examples are all the metals, okay, mostly. And then we have insulators. Insulators are the materials which do not conduct electricity no matter what, okay? Example is wood, glass, okay? And then we have semiconductors. Now, semiconductors are a little different, okay? They may conduct electricity given certain circumstances. And we are going to discuss as a part of this video, what are those circumstances and when do they conduct electricity? So let's start. Now, when we talk about conduction, well, conduction happens due to movement of two things, okay? So what are these two things? So when a material is having free or delocalized electrons, so every system has electrons, you should know that, okay? If there's a sigma bond, these electrons are tightly bound and they are not available to move, okay? So the most important thing is that the system should have free or available electrons and if that is the case, then the, the material can conduct electricity, right? The second thing which the material should or may have for conduction is the ions. So in case of metallic solids, we have free electrons because of which metals are conductors, right? But in case of ionic solids like sodium chloride, we know that when sodium chloride is, mix is mixed in water, we have sodium and chloride ions which are formed and that mixture is also, that solution is also a conductor, right? So again, ions also, the free movement of ions, the mobile ions can also cause electricity conduction and these are the two things which are the main reasons for not the main but the only reasons for conduction of electricity in any material okay but as a part of the band theory which we are going to discuss as a part of this video we are going to talk about only the materials which conduct electricity due to the presence of presence of electrons okay so let's start well before starting we'll talk about the metallic solids for a bit now, metallic solids, as we already know, have an electron C model. What is an electron C model? Electron C model is like the mm, positive charges. So, for example, we have sodium, okay, which is a metal. It is going to ionize into sodium plus and one electron, okay. So, this is called the cation or we also call it as kernel, okay. And this is the one electron which is present. In magnesium, we have magnesium plus two cation and here we have instead of one, two electrons, right? So this is magnesium kernel and we have two electrons per atom. So in case of metallic, metallic solid, we have number of valence electrons which are available per atom and the more number of electrons we have, the more conduction is going to be there in case of metallic solids, okay? Now let's talk about the band theory of conduction and the band theory is going to explain what is a conductor, what is an insulator, what is a semiconductor. All right, so let's discuss what is this band theory, okay? So this band theory is actually a theory which tries to explain uh, the conduction in case of your various conductors, insulators, and semiconductors, okay? And it is based upon your MOT, which is the molecular orbital theory, okay? What is this molecular orbital theory? This theory basically states that whenever atomic orbitals combine, okay, of equivalent energy, they give rise to new orbitals, which are called molecular orbitals, right? That's what this theory basically, what this is what it has to say. 
Now, we all know that every element in the periodic table have certain valence electrons. We know that, right? Metals have valence electrons which are quite loosely bound, whereas, but all the other also have valence electrons. Hain to say, theke? Loosely or not loosely bound. Now, these valence electrons uh, present in any kind of system are so close in energy that they are going to form a band kind of structure, okay? So, this is what they're going to form because they are in so close in energy, these atomic orbitals all combine to form molecular orbitals and they are so close in energy, they form a band, okay? And this band is called the valence band. Valence band is made up of all the different valence electrons which is available in case of any element, okay? Okay, now the band theory says that a conduction is possible, okay, in any material only when the electrons from which, okay, of course, you know the valence band is filled with electrons, right? So when the electrons from the valence band can cross this energy gap and reach to the conduction band, okay? That is when conduction is going to happen. This is what this theory has to say. Now, the most important thing for you to realize is there is no actual band, okay? There's no, actually, you'll not, you know, if you just look at into a conductor in CD, you'll not find a real band there, no. It's actually just a theory which is trying to explain conduction, okay? It's, there's no reality of band or all these things, okay? That's something which we should know uh, in the back of our minds. Okay, so when this valence band is there and when the electrons from the valence band are able to cross this energy barrier, okay, and reach to the conduction band, that is when conduction happens. Okay, so it's quite a given that of course in metals, uh, of course the electrons maybe can cross this barrier, that's, that's why metals are conducting, right? In insulators, maybe the electrons can never cross this barrier, that's why they're insulators, they do not conduct. And in case of semiconductors, they may sometimes do that and may not, right? Okay, so that is what this theory has to say. So whatever I just said, I'll just put it into, you know, words uh, in a better way. So in metals, as you can see, this is the valence band, which is the filled valence band. So valence bands are always always filled because every, every element has valence electrons, right? So valence band is always having electrons. But the question is, does the conduction band have electrons? And if that has electrons, only then conduction is going to happen. So in valence band, as you can see, in metals, these two bands are overlapping, okay? So there is no energy barrier which the electrons have to fulfill. Electrons are so easily moving to the conduction band that, that conduction is readily happening in case of metals, right? So in case of metals, there is no energy gap or maybe a little energy gap, which might sometimes be there. And that is why conduction is very easy in case of metals, okay? Talking about insulators, okay? The valence band is having uh, certain electrons, but there is a huge energy gap which is never uh, possible for the electrons to fulfill and that is why insulators never conduct electricity, okay? Whereas in case of semiconductors, as you, as you can see, the energy gap is quite little, okay? So the electrons cannot readily go to the conduction band, but if they are provided with certain amount of energy, they can do that, right? So that's why semiconductors are, that's why semiconductors, because they might conduct electricity, they might become conductors, in certain conditions. Okay, now what do you think would happen when we increase temperature for metals? Uh, right now I'm only talking about metals, I'm not talking about semiconductors or insulators, okay? As I already said, if in semiconductors we apply, we uh, give the electrons certain amount of energy from ourselves, from our side, which may be heat energy, the electrons from here can go to here and, you know, become conducting in nature. In insulators, if we apply energy, uh, still they will never be able to cross this barrier and no matter how much energy we apply, insulators is never going to become a conductor, okay? In metals, what happens? Let's say, because in metals already conduction is happening, right? But in metals, if we try to heat it, what will happen? Will the conduction become better? We'll see. Now in metals, as you can see, we have metal positive charge and electrons. That's what the, uh, the C, electron C model is like, okay? Now, these positive charges, which are called kernels, as I already said, they start vibrating at a much higher speed when you apply higher temperature, okay? Because of which, the movement of electron is restricted, and that is why, in case of metals, if you increase the temperature, okay, if temperature is increased, the conduction is decreased in case of metals. That is what happened in case of metals, okay? In semiconductors, on the other hand, if you increase temperature, of course, the conduction is going to increase because the electrons are getting energy to go to the conduction band. So this is very important uh, to know the difference of temperature in case of metals and semiconductors. Okay. So metals, temperature increases, conductivity decreases. To sum it up, what happens in case of semiconductors is this. Okay. So this is, as you can see, the energy gap is really quite less. 
and as and when the energy is supplied from the surroundings which means in form of heat the electrons from the valence band can go to the conduction band quite easily and hence become conductors or, or hence conduct electricity right they'll not become conductors as in because they'll not be very good conductors but they will become soft conductors okay so now which basically means that this is a crystal of silicon silicon is a semiconductor it belongs to group 14 of periodic table and uh, now as you can see all the electrons are in the bonded situation right each single bond constitute of two electrons we all know that right each covalent bond constitute of two electrons and of course every system has electrons we know that right because electrons must always be there right but only when these electrons are available okay they are mobile they are free which i already said only then conduction can happen which of course is the case with metals and not with semiconductors right so when we apply heat energy which is here the electron is going to uh, you know become free of its bond which means the bond is going to break and now this electron is available for conduction and that is how we are making semiconductors conducting by applying heat okay this is called as intrinsic semiconductors which are belonging to group 14 of periodic table okay which is silicon and germanium okay they are called intrinsic because they are internally semiconductors we just have to supply some amount of energy or we just have to increase the temperature okay this is what is written here now what if we do not want to depend upon temperature okay because even if we do that, uh, the conduction that we get get is not quite practical. It's not that much and we cannot even use it for any purpose that we have to, right? So now we do not want to depend upon uh, heating. And if we don't do that, that kind of semiconductors which uh, will, will allow us to move ahead of heating and a better conduction are called extrinsic semiconductors. We will see how. So what do we do is we purposely add some impurity okay we add some impurity purposely on purpose and this process is called doping okay now the impurity which we are going to add is not going to be actually dust particle okay so the impurity which we are going to add is going to be a metal only or an element only okay not a metal it's going to be an element it can be electron rich or it can be electron deficient okay and depending upon whether it's electron rich or electron defici deficient we will get the n type and p type semiconductors all right, so to understand the n-type and p-type semiconductors, we have a beautiful image of a periodic table right in front of us. So we don't have to remember it, okay, the entire series, we don't have to. We just have to know what is present in group 13, group 14 and group 15, okay. So these are the three groups which we mainly want to consider. So let's just jump on right here, okay. So we have group 13, 14 and 15 and we already know that group 14, which is this one, is having silicon and germanium, which are our intrinsic semiconductors, okay. And they have the valency of 4, which means they have 4 electrons in their outermost shell, okay? Group 15, on the other hand, is having the valency of 5, which means it has 5 electrons in its outermost shell. And group 13 is having the valency of 3, which means it has 3 electrons in its outermost shell, right? Now, this is what a silicon crystal looks like, where we have different silicon atoms having 4 bonds each, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? And uh, the other ones are sh in the shared state. And all the bonds, which you, all the electrons which are which you see on your screen are all in the bonded situation. Okay, they are not free to move. And because they are not free to move, they cannot conduct, right? Okay, but what if I try to replace one of the silicon atom with phosphorus, okay? So I'm replacing one silicon with one phosphorus. That's what I'm doing here. And uh, the phosphorus is having a valency of five, which means it is having five electrons. So one, two, three and four electrons are used up in forming the bonds as silicon atom would do but the fifth one is actually free in the free state state and it can actually be used to conduct electricity right this type in this type of semiconductors we are where we are doping an impurity of group 15 okay and as a result of which we have extra electrons available or negative charges available for conduction we call it as n type semiconductor because conduction is because of the presence of negative charges here okay all right now if the same thing uh, we do with the group 13 element okay so in case of group 13 element we know the valency is 4 which means they are forming three bonds okay because uh, sorry the valency is 3 because they form three bonds okay now if i replace one silicon atom with a boron right so it only has three electrons one two three these three are used up in formation of bonds whereas one place is left 
and this one place which is left is called a hole which is positive why is it positive it's not actually having a positive charge because but because it is a deficiency of electron it is called a positive hole right so when the conduction happens because of positive holes we'll discuss how that happens that is called a p type semiconductor now let's see how these holes are able to conduct well the holes when they conduct electricity is it's mainly because of electrons only because these holes are just a uh, you know vacant spaces where electron wants to jump okay and because electron jumps to you know from one hole to another that actually causes the movement of electrons and uh, that's why holes are also able to conduct electricity right so that's what your holes are and that's what the conduction is like in the p type semiconductors so we have completed what what are the conductors what are insulators what is the valence band theory the n type and p type semiconductors coming to the applications of it we have a variety of different applications of semiconductors resistors capacitors diodes transistors well a number of applications i can list uh, which you know on the screen you have even less okay so it's a, it's quite an evolving field still so you can do the research if you want to later in life so if you have any doubts in this video you can comment that down below and you can also follow this page for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching